Could install some West Coast goodies and I figured I'd make a quick video. Haven't uploaded anything for a while, so um, it's really cold outside. I've got three point dogs for my Echo 2511. And then I have the Faller suspension kit for my 462. And I've actually installed one of these kits already on my steel 500i made a huge difference and the 500i is super floppy right out the gate so um definitely a must on there one thing that i'll show you here on this one look how much look how much wiggle there is in that back handle see that i don't know if that's just I don't know if that's just because my saw is old. This 462 is about two years old, but I'll show you. There's bushings here, and there's a bushing in here, and that's actually what these replace. So these are quite a bit bigger. Um, and there's also a bushing up here in the front, right up in there, and that's actually what that is. So ideally, that should change the amount of flex that I have there. This is just too easy to do. Um, and clean up some of the slop in the saw. So yeah, we'll get started with the 2511 since that's the easy install. And uh, I'm not really showing you guys anything phenomenal here when I put dogs on, so we'll just talk while we do it. This is a pretty simple install. These dogs go on the inside, so. So one thing to always make sure you do clean the bar groove i mean that's if you're having trouble with your chain getting oil that's usually what the problem is there so i have this little tool it's not even made for this but it works perfect all right so the west coast dogs kit is easy um cool thing about it is it comes with the hardware which is something that i didn't even really think of um they're torque bits, so they're gonna fit right in there like that. For the sake of realism, I'll show you what I really do. I'm sure they probably recommend not using an impact wrench, but I am going to. So, get them started there. If you're ever installing these West Coast dogs, the uh, if you didn't already know, the two points, the two stacked points, they go to the bottom. And the idea behind them is... Bam. It's in there. Um, might have stripped out that bottom one. That's all right. This actually runs right on the chain. This center pin is an indicator of right exactly where your chain's gonna ride. All right, so I said I stripped out that bottom hole. On Echo, everything's plastic, um, so very cheap. So I just, a little super glue. Let's put a little in there, tighten the screw down, it'll set. Blacked out 2511, three point dogs. Probably gave up a solid inch of bar there, but um, I mean, if anything, it's for safety's sake. So now don't have to worry about it kicking out as much when because I'm using such a small bar. So yeah, pretty sick. All right, on to the 462. So. To replace these bushings right in here, we need to obviously take the wrap handle off. We're gonna to need to fold this whole lower assembly back to get to those, and then they just pop out and the new ones pop in. Um, also, we need to drop out this front suspension assembly and change the bushing out that's over in here. And that's gonna, I'm assuming, really help with some of that side to side flex that's bothering me so much so first things first we need to take off the full wrap 
Now I'm gonna show you something. Everybody always asks me about this right here. Check her out. It's just a little rubber jaunt. Holds a scrunch. Um, honestly, this full wrap handle, because I did not buy this saw as the R model, this full wrap handle came with that. Um, so I don't really know for sure where you get them. I was told you can get them from the steel dealership for something in the area of like a dollar or something, a couple dollars. And then you would need to take this assembly apart down here and actually slide it up on there. But anyway, so I've uh, undone these two side screws. That's what you gotta get. And then the rest of it is up here in the front. These are all torque bits, by the way. Um, I think it's like a T30 or T, uh, T27. So, um, Probably not supposed to use an impact wrench. Again, I just would like to be honest with you guys. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I use the impact wrench. So now, these are a super pain in the neck. Um, see how that kind of flops in and out of there and then there's actually a channel that these go in up here. Now everything becomes super floppy. I actually had an issue with this saw before, so I'm a little bit nervous about doing this. When I put this full wrap on, something that happened, oh, I missed one. I forgot about that little vibration mount up there. So anyway, like I was saying, when I, when I put this wrap on, something that happened was the throttle linkage actually completely came out from the handle. And so I couldn't figure it out. I took it back to steel and they told me that there was a recall on that exact thing from the steel dealership. And something with a plastic sleeve that the linkage rides in was messed up and uh anyway they fixed it for free i'm just popping this little rubber gasket out in here there we go so i'm really hopeful that that was an isolated incident and not something that i'm going to experience here today go and that one i see i just pushed through from that side so here's what look at that i mean these are like pretty compacted but these are the factory rubber grommets that go in there the ones that actually come from west coast saws you look at this i mean you can see that is a huge difference um that's i think that's going to make the biggest difference right there in the side to side play honestly so yeah, um, we'll tuck those up in there. I'll show you another thing here real quick before we do that. Um, down in here, right inside that three-point dog is another torque screw. There it is. That comes out and that allows this assembly here to drop down. Now you do kind of have to work the spring off. So here's that whole assembly in there. Um, pretty nasty up in there. You know what? I think maybe I'll charge my air compressor up and give that a blow. I mean, this isn't something that I regularly take apart, obviously. So while the opportunity presents itself, just blow the gunk out of there. Um, this is easy, look. Here's a bushing right here, just pops off. This one pops on there, um, cup side out. That's a little easier said than done, huh? There we go. It's only cause you guys are watching. So this spring 
on the 500i you actually change the spring and it's really easy this these pieces just unscrew out of there now on the 462 this is actually the upgraded spring already so not really it's not included in the kit because it's not really necessary now um if you can see there's a little circle down in here that's where this bushing actually goes so we'll work that in there there we go and you just the way you know if you got it in right is you can just look down in here and see that that screw hole aligns and i'll put this back in right away I just give it too low quick. This is a small impact gun. I've never had any issues impact impacting this these things. Um, so again, this kind of rolls back and out of the way a little bit, like that. I'm trying to be easy on it because I don't want to ruin the throttle linkage, like I told you from before. I'm just going to work the, the ends of it a little bit here with the scrunch to make sure that it pops in there all the way, which it did now. Now the lower one. So... I'll give you a little tip that I got from already watching somebody else's YouTube on this. I'll drop a little, drop a little three in one oil on there. Not gonna cause any functionality issues, but that will help it. Seat better, there we go, right in. And now this is going to be a much tighter fit in between those two bushings, which I already can tell you that we're golden on that. And now it's just a simple matter of putting the wrap handle back on, which I'm not going to lie to you guys, kind of sucks. And I'm debating on whether or not I should even record doing it, but for the sake of transparency, I will. There you go. Now, flip her around. The upper suspension. Last but not least. All right. Throttle works. Makes me feel pretty good. Um, wow. That's immediately noticeable. That is a lot stiffer in that in that rear handle. Um, so I'll get the bar back on here and then we'll show you what she looks like. All right. All right, all right. Drop the scrunch back in there. And let's take a look at the differences. I mean, what I'm going to tell you, it's hard to really pick up on camera, but with the older suspension, I noticed there was free movement here. Like all the flex was actually in that front suspension. Whereas now, as you guys already saw, these bushings are against here where there was a pretty significant gap from the factory. So 
it's stiff right away as opposed to and this is where it's just kind of my description but i had free movement before i ever got up against anything i had just wiggle like i could just sit here and wiggle the saw and the rear handle would wiggle um so that's stiffened up right away i can imagine that there is probably some sort of improved feel there is uh when i'm going to be leveraging against the bar in a cut so close-up view here um if you remember the initial amount of flex that i had in here you see how that, that bushing's up against there right away um there's no there's no gap like there was yeah man um and then there's the bushing that we showed the little foam bushing that goes up in there so yeah, um, 462 West Coast Faller Suspension Mod successfully installed. Throttle still works. I'm excited to, to get to use it. I mean, ideally a stiffer suspension is gonna allow you to deliver the power more fluidly, you know, like when you're really leveraging into a cut. Um, I think one thing that I really, really like is when you're making a notch, you don't get that 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 flex on the bar when you're trying to clean it up, which actually can miss a lot in your cut just a little bit. So thanks for watching. Um, hopefully it helps somebody and see you guys next time.